All right. Class. Yes. Oh, it's kind of weak. Anyway. All right. So this should be page seven. Today's notes, right? So hashtag seven. You're writing on that because a lot of people still don't put their stuff in their notebook when they're supposed to. And today's date. 13? Yeah. Okay. There you go. So now, a couple of these. I'm going to go back. I'm going to reference the notes from um, Friday. The notes from Friday. I'm going to reference that. So if you guys have this right here, right here in the middle. So I identified it right here. So what I said is this was completing the square, and the left side came out to be a perfect square. I did all the math to make this over here a perfect square. All right, so once it comes a perfect square, we use that information here, my b divided by 2, to get this. Now, I'm going to go along with that some more here. Zoom in. There we go. So zooming in on this, uh, do you want to? Yes. Yeah, go ahead. All right, so see this right here, 25. 25 is a perfect square. So being a perfect square, what times what gives me 25? Five times five, right? So this number is key. That number's key. So if it's five times five, okay, and now this one right here is five plus five. That's what's gonna make this one here a perfect square. Because this is a perfect square of five times five, then my two numbers that multiply together to get that add together to get that. So this would be a perfect square of x. You guys remember from the formula that I just showed you from the other notes. What would I do to get this number right here? B divided by 2. B divided by 2. So it's going to be plus 5, right? So that's where it is. Okay, let's look at this one right here. Is 29 a perfect square? Uh, nope, it's not a perfect square. So can I do the same thing that I did here with this? Nope, I'm going to say no. Is 8 a perfect square? Yes? What times what gives me 8? <laughs> 4 times 2. Is that a perfect square, though? Perfect square is the same number multiplied together. So is this one going to be a perfect square? No, this one's not a perfect square, so it's not going to give me that. Okay. And is 9 a perfect square? Yes. yes it is a perfect square. Of what? Three, three. 3. Okay. Now, of 3. But 3 plus 3 is 6, right? Those add together to be that. So in this case right here, I would have what? X. So what would I do for this one right here? Minus three. Minus three. Very good, because it's the B divided by two. So it's negative six divided by two is negative three. There we go. Does that make sense? Hopefully, a little bit. Okay. All right. Now, this next part right here, I'm going to go through this kind of quick. It says, Elena and Han solve the equation in two different ways. So this is completing the square. This is quadratic formula. Blah, blah, blah. Gets down to this answer here. Blah, blah, blah. Gets down to this answer here. But when I'm looking at my two solutions... I'm looking at my two solutions, they do not look the same. And that's a problem. They do not look the same, but I need them to be the same if both these people are correct. 
So there's one way I can do this is by taking my handy dandy calculator and plugging it in. I can plug it in a calculator to see if both values are the same. So if it was three plus rad two, or it would be three plus rad eight divided by two. I could use that to see if these answers are equivalent, the same. Now, I'm gonna go down to this point right here, and I'm just gonna do this one, and I'm gonna do this one right here. So, on both of these, I'm gonna tell you right now, they are equal. They are equal, and, but this one has a little bit more factoring than this one does. So I could change this answer. So on the bottom of this, I'm gonna take this and I'm going to rewrite it. So six plus or minus square root of eight over two. Now, square root of eight, okay, or even just eight altogether. What multiplies together to give me eight? Four times two. So I'm gonna rewrite that, but this time I'm gonna rewrite Instead of square root of 8, it's going to be the square root of 4 times 2. 6 plus or minus square root of 4 times 2 over 2. Now, what we're doing right here is technically factoring the radical. So, right here, whenever I have it like this, I could separate it into two separate radicals, which is going to look like this. 6 plus or minus square root of 4 times square root of 2 over 2. And there's a good reason for doing that. What's the square root of 4? 2. Is 4 a perfect square? Yes, 4 is a perfect square, so that is going to be a 2. So I could rewrite this by factoring out a perfect square there. I can now rewrite it as... 6 plus or minus 2 square root of 2 over 2. Now from here, I'm going to go and separate my answers because we always need to separate my fractions. And I'm going to do that. So it's going to be 6 over 2 plus... 2 rad 2 over 2, and it's going to be 6 over 2 minus 2 rad 2 over 2. We know 6 divided by 2 gives me what? 3, right? Now, what about the 2 over 2 here? That's 1, right? Or in this case, it's going to cancel out, isn't it? Yeah, so it's going to be plus rad 2. And on this side over here, it does the same thing. So 6 divided by 2 is going to give me 3 minus rad 2. And both of these right here, after factoring it, we get the same answer as we had up here. So they are the same, they are equivalent, they just look different because they're not factored completely. All right, are we ready? So now this is what's gonna happen. So on the back side over here, we're gonna do these two at a time. says, solve each quadratic equation with the method of your choice. Be prepared to compare your approach with a partner. Now, all the different methods we have at our disposal, we're going to do these two right now, and I'm going to go over those. Then we're going to do next two and do the same thing. So I would like everyone right now doing one and two right now.
All right, so, okay, everyone tried to make this a little bit more complicated than necessary. How do you want to do a square? So it would be x equals plus or minus the square root of 100, right? Yeah. And we know the square root of 100 is? 10. So x equals plus or minus 10. That's it. OK. For number two, something similar. So I'm going to go through and same thing. Undo a square by square rooting. X equals plus or minus the square root of 38. Now, uh, let me see. 38. Uh, is there any factors there? Is that factor? No, because it's going to be 19 times 2. Yeah, so neither. So now, on this one right here, the radical doesn't factor any further, so I just leave it like that. Leave it as a square root. All right, I'm going to have you people do 3 and 4 right now. And these are ABCs. ABC would probably be the easiest way. All right, people. So let's take a look on this. Uh, okay, so I'm going to do it using the AC method. And since I'm solving, I'm trying to get x by itself. I wanted to say x equals. So I'm solving this. AC method, you should get a times c is 25, negative 10. So that's negative 5 and negative 5. x squared uh, minus 5x minus 5x plus 25 equals 0. Group. Take out an x. I'm left with x minus 5. Take out a negative 5. x minus 5. So I'm left with x minus 5 and x minus 5 equals 0. Now, this is factoring this way. But we're trying to solve for x now, right? So what would I do to try and make this into an x equals? Plus 5 on both sides, right? So it's going to look like this. It's going to be x minus 5 equals 0 plus 5 plus 5 x equals 5. Now, do I have to do that again? Say no. No, because they're both the same thing. So I'll get x equals 5 here. All right. Number 4, same thing. It's going to be AC method. 40... So 4 and 10, group, x plus 4, take it a positive 10, x plus 4. So it's going to be x plus 4 and x plus 10 equals 0. Again, trying to get a solution. So I wanted to say x equals. So I take each one of these and make it x equals. So right here it's going to be x plus 10 equals 0. Minus 10. x is negative 10. x plus 4 equals 0. Minus 4 minus 4 x equals negative 4. So there's my two solutions. Yes? On the second step, are you like dividing like multiplying? Uh, which one are you at? Right here? Yeah. How the other one? This one? Up here. No. No, in the middle. Yeah, this is. Right there? Yeah. Okay, so for this, you're actually <laughs> dividing. So you're taking out. So you're dividing so they both have a common factor of x. 
that comes out here. X squared divided by X gives you X. 4X divided by X gives you 4. Okay? This next one over here, they have a common factor of 10. So 10X divided by 10 is just X. And then 40 divided by 10 is 4. So I am dividing on this. Yeah, it's 40 divided by 10. Okay, so I get both solutions there. All right. Now, another way. Uh, one thing that we can do, which you might not have seen before, it's called a solution set. So we could write it in solution set. So like this one right here, in a solution set, it would be braces, 5. And this one over here is going to be braces and negative 10 and negative 4. Yes, go ahead. All right, you guys are going to do the last two right now. All right, going over 5. 5 is a good one. Let's see, on 5... So if you've done the whole AC method, you should come out with X, let me see, plus 3 and X plus 11. There is a way to jump straight to this. Okay, but the only problem is if you don't understand this, you're not going to understand this. So, you got this down. I actually gave you the notes for this yesterday or Friday. Okay, so this is going to be my solutions are going to be negative 3 and negative 11. Now, this last one, six, I said it is quadratic. So that's my ABCs. So I have negative, negative B, ah, that's a five, sorry. Plus or minus square root of negative five minus four times three times negative 11 all over 2 times 3. Now, remember the parts that you could put in the calculator. This isn't longer. You just have to write it out and then put pieces in the calculator. So you could do it all in the calculator and still get all your points. But you just have to do step by step. My three parts of this right here, right Rafa? The inside and that. So by doing that, I should get five plus or minus. The inside comes out to be like 157. I think so. I think it's 157. Yeah, 157. All over 6. Okay, because square root of 157 does not factor. Yeah, not that I know of. Anyway, so it doesn't. So I'm going to go through and separate it out to my two solutions. So my two solutions would be x equals, all right? No, you just leave it as a radical, just like I did on number two. So 5 over 6 plus square root of 157 over 6 and 
5 over 6 minus square root of 157 over 6. And as your solution set, it's got to be the same thing again. Comma. Yes, no, maybe. Okay. The quadratic formula is most likely going to be your guys' go-to for all of it. It solves all the time, even if your solution is imaginary. Remember what imaginary are? What's imaginary number? Zero. Nope. Five negatives. Not negatives. Positive. What? Positive. The I. No. The I. Oh, the I. Yeah, the I. Remember the I? But I was a square root of negative one, right? So whenever you had a square root inside the radical, that's your I. I'm sorry, the, if you have a negative inside the radical, sorry, forgive me. So if there's a negative inside the radical, that's a I. And so that would be imaginary. So this one works for imaginary numbers. It works for all kinds of numbers where you can't do the same thing using other methods. All right, so for today, I will remind you guys that uh, 315 is going to be due tomorrow. Uh, the homework 316 is going to be due on Wednesday. Okay, don't forget, like, share, and subscribe. Hit that notification button.